Hello everyone, thank you for joining us here today at Grand Union for a market update with CBRE and Savills, as well as interior design overviews from Killer 5 Interior Design. We're going to hear from Sebastian Golding, Residential Research Analyst for Savills, talking us through the London housing market and its robust rental demand. Then we'll hear from Jen Seabritz, Head of Research for CBRE, who will be discussing the emerging trends after the coronavirus. We are also joined by Rebecca Charles, Design Director from Killer 5 Interior Design, to showcase our latest two and three bedroom show homes. Finally, Joe Azad, our Senior Project Sales Manager, will talk you through the exciting Grand Union development here in Alperton by St George. So, without further ado, I'm pleased to hand over to Sebastian. Great, thanks very much, Craig. So, the, the rate of change that we've seen in the housing market has come, to, has come as a surprise to a lot of us, particularly in the last few months or so. So with this in mind, I thought I would run through some uh, interesting charts for you today, which will hopefully give you an idea of what is going on in the market at the moment. So to kick things off, I thought I would start with uh, annual house price growth for the UK. Um, and what you can see initially is that house price growth topped out in 2016. We then saw the e referendum and Brexit uncertainty um, have a negative impact on the rate of growth, basically until the end of 2019 where we saw a conservative victory um, become more and more likely. And this caused a bounce in house price growth. Um, however, this bounce in house price growth was curtailed by the lockdown. However, um, post lockdown, um, we've seen a spike in, in house price growth, um, particularly in, in August, where we saw house prices grow by 2.2%, which left values 3.7% um, up um, for the year to August 2020. We've also seen a rapid rebound in transactions. So this chart here shows the um, sales subject to contract um, as a proportion of those seen at the same time last year. And what you can see is that during the lockdown, um, we saw transactions basically stall completely. However, after the lockdown where restrictions were lifted, you can see that actually transactions increased tremendously um, to the point where in August, we've seen transactions nearly twice um, the number that we saw back in 2019. Now there are three main reasons for this. One, we've seen pent up demand unwind. Two, we've seen households changing their preferences for their homes as a result of being locked up in their homes for large parts of the lockdown. And three, we saw uh, the announcement of the stamp duty relief. So while those are sort of short term indicators of the housing market, there are some relatively positive um, indicators for the housing market, factors affecting the housing market moving forward. So the first is GDP growth. Now there's a lot of uncertainty around GDP growth moving forward, but you can see on the left hand side of the screen here that Oxford Economics are forecasting a strong rebound um, for the economy. But more importantly for the housing market, they're also forecasting record lows um, for interest rates for the next five years. And historically there has been a link uh, or a strong link between low interest rates and house price growth. So this suggests that there is certainly capacity for house price growth moving forward. Now um, affordability has been an issue in London for a while now and this has caused a lot of households to push towards the rental market or kept in the rental market. Uh, and this is quite sort of clearly illustrated in the chart on the screen over here which shows um, tenant demand in the pink bars far outweighing landlord instructions designated by the yellow line. Uh, and you can see that this trend has occurred basically since 2017 up until the lockdown in 2020. Now there is some volatility around the lockdown, but I think fundamentally over the long term, we think that this affordability issue in London is not going away anytime soon. And so this suggests that there is robust tenant demand or going to be robust tenant demand moving forward. One of the key components of tenant demand is um, employment and employment numbers. Now, one of the key questions coming out of the lockdown is which areas are going to recover quickest in terms of employment. Um, and so the areas that um, are more exposed to sectors or industries uh, that can work remotely efficiently are going to recover best. So um, cities or areas that um, have a high proportion of financial services, or tech services or professional services are going to recover fastest. And so as a result, 
um, you can see from this chart here that London and the South East are A, going to recover quickest, and B, are likely to see stronger growth thereafter. Uh, and so this would suggest that London and the South East are likely to see strong tenant demand moving forward, which can only be a good thing for general rental demand and rental growth moving forward. So just to summarize these key slides, um, we've seen uh, We've seen the housing market have a strong bounce back in both price growth and transactions. Um, Oxford economics are forecasting record low interest rates for the next five years, which will provide capacity for house price growth moving forward. Um, we are likely to see strong rental demand um, in London remain, uh, given affordability pressures. Uh, and finally, London and the Southeast are likely to lead the employment recovery, which can only be a good thing for uh, tenant demand and rental demand moving forward. So I'll now hand over to Jane Seabritz from Seabrary. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Seb. One of my guilty pleasures is a TV programme called Back in Time For, as in Back in Time For Tea, Back in Time For Work, Back in Time For School. It's a pseudo-historical programme that follows a family experiencing life in different decades. So each episode is a different decade, so the 30s and the 40s. So back in time for tea, for example, follows a family experiencing the different foods of the era. So it, it highlights the changes in taste and wealth and technology. So in the 40s, it was all about rationing. In the 80s, it's all about TV dinners. Now, I watched this programme with my girls, and during the episodes of the 80s and 90s, I spend the whole time saying, oh, I love that, oh, I wanted a space hopper and my mum would never let me have one. It's really strange watching programmes like that because you realise that your early childhood is now part of the history books. You see, when you're living through all this change, it happens so slowly and gradually, and you're young, of course, so you don't really notice what's actually happening around you. It's very rare that you take notice of the moments that are really pivotal, like the introduction of mobile phones and the internet. It just happened. So while we're always living through history, it's only occasionally that we notice the pivotal moments, the moments that really are going to make a big change, like the first man on the moon, for example. The coronavirus outbreak is one of those events that we know is going to be pivotal. We know it's going to be in the history books. We're not quite sure how it's all going to end, but we do know that the coronavirus is a catalyst and it is going to change the way that we live, work and play. For many, life during lockdown was a chance to reassess the way they lived, what they liked about their homes, what they didn't like about their homes, and in some cases, what they did and didn't like about their partner. And this has given rise to a wave of unexpected home moves. We're seeing a particular demand for larger houses, driven by families who've been driven mad by their kids when they've had no or little outside space. And as a broad rule of thumb, larger homes are selling faster than smaller homes. So Houses are selling faster than flats, larger flats are selling faster than smaller flats. And this partly reflects the increasing trend of working from home. Over the last five or six months during lockdown, around 16 million people have been working from home regularly. To put this into context, last year under 2 million people worked at home regularly. Around 75% of people who are working from home have said that they'd like to continue working from home. Now, this isn't binary, they don't necessarily want to work at home all the time, but what they'd like to do is work at home some of the time, maybe two or three days a week. That way, they benefit from being in the office and being collaborative, but also, on days they're working from home, they don't have to commute, they save a bit of money and a bit of time. Working from home is going to have a huge impact on the types of property and the locations that we are demanding. If you're working from home, you need a designated office space or at least an extra bedroom that you can use as an office space. These sorts of trends are going to be really important for investors and homeowners to consider when they're looking to buy property. Location has always been important, but if you're working from home, it becomes even more important. If you're spending five days a week in the same location, you want it to be nice. You want there to be nice green outside space to go walking in. You want there to be nice places for you to go and eat. The desire for private personal space has also increased. Balconies, for example, and we found properties with balconies have outsold all other properties. Again, these are things to consider if you're looking to buy a property at the moment. 
One thing that hasn't wavered is the impact of regeneration. Regeneration is so important, it's even studied at school now. And the regeneration of Stratford during the Olympics is part of the geography A-level curriculum. Regeneration massively improves an area, and this can therefore have a knock-on impact on property prices. Our research has shown that over the life of a regeneration project, property prices in the area can increase, on average, by 2% more per annum than the wider house price growth. And this is regardless of where you are in the market cycle. And so if you're looking for a sound investment, a regeneration area is always a good prospect. Thanks very much for listening. Back over to you, Craig. Thanks, Sebastian and Jen. That was really interesting. To see how strongly the markets have bounced back after lockdown, as well as the strong rental demand, is certainly encouraging. Also highlighting how the coronavirus will be a pivotal moment in our history and how it's already shaping via demands for larger homes with balconies, as well as their close proximity to outdoor space and amenities. I'm now delighted to hand over to Rebecca from Killer 5 Interior Design, who's going to talk us through the latest interior design trends they've used in our two and three bedroom show homes. Hi, my name's Rebecca, Design Director from Killer 5. I'm here in the three bed apartment at Grand Union to talk about the interior design and trends. Uh, 2020 has seen a big influence uh, from the 1920s with colour trends, uh, bold, bright, deep colours, uh, mixing in with opulent finishes such as the brass and marble finishes that we've used within the furniture. We've used a mixture of bold, punchy and geometric patterns within the interiors um, the decade of beige and grey um, is, is definitely over now um, and it's time to embrace colour. It's all about taking risks. Curvy circular shapes are a huge trend in 2020, um, we, as you can see from the circular coffee tables um, and oval dining table. They provide great element of balance and harmony within the space and can easily connect spaces very well within the lounge, dining, kitchen, open plan. Following the theme of bold colour, we've introduced into the bedroom at Grand Union the bold contemporary floral wallpaper, where we've picked out the deep raspberry colour um, to use on the headboard in this velvet fabric. Um, also incorporating the geometric um, designs into the cushions which add a, a very sort of bold pop of colour um, onto the bed. This year has seen a large increase for a work from home area. We've been able to utilise the second bedroom for this purpose, um, allowing space for a desk and chair and also a king size bed. It acts as a great flexible space while also being able to function as a bedroom. Here in the two bedroom department at Grand Union, we have the full height windows which allows an abundance of light to come in. This has allowed us to go bold and brave with the wallpaper. The leafy green tonal design definitely brings the outside in. The tonal green backdrop has also allowed us to inject bold colours such as the, the turquoise and coral colours shown in the cushions and dining chairs. A, another way to introduce colour and pattern is with accessories. These can be playful and fun and is a great way to introduce character to the space. This year we've seen a large influence from ethnic design. Uh, here we've used an ethnic print velvet on the headboard, which is a great way to make a focal point in a bedroom. Thank you very much for watching. Now over to you, Craig. Thank you, Rebecca. The show homes certainly do look fantastic, full of colour and vibrancy. Finally, I'm pleased to hand over to Joe, who's going to talk you through the exciting Grand Union development. Thank you, Craig. Grand Union is London's newest and most exciting river and canal side development by St George. Over the next 15 years, we'll be delivering more than 3,000 homes with a selection of Manhattan, one, two and three bedroom homes available. Grand Union will truly be a place where you can live, work and connect. Situated in North West London Zone 3, we are just a seven minute walk away from our nearest tube station, Stonebridge Park. 
This station is served by the London Underground's Bakerloo Line and the London Overground. You can get to Oxford Circus directly in just 26 minutes. Very impressive. Also, for those of you with bags of energy, you can cycle all the way to Paddington alongside the Grand Union Canal in just 35 minutes. Underground car parking is also available as an option. As mentioned earlier by Jen, you'll have a plethora of amenities here. You'll have a 12-hour concierge, a residence lounge with a meeting space, a private children's nursery, even a two-lane bowling alley. In addition to that, you'll have an array of shops, bars, cafes, and even an on-site gym and supermarket. What we're also looking forward to is a medical centre coming in phase two. Green Spaces is shown to have a positive impact on physical and emotional well-being. With that said, this development is spread across 22 acres, 50% of which is dedicated to open green spaces and beautifully manicured gardens. So, what are you waiting for? Come and say hello to Grand Union. Back to you, Craig. Thank you very much, Joe. The regeneration of Grand Union certainly will make it an amazing place to live, work and connect. I think all that remains for me to say is thank you for joining us today. I hope you found it as interesting as I have. If you'd like any further information, please call a member of the St George, CBRE or Savills teams on the numbers on the next screen. Thanks once again and stay safe everybody.